Compare data sets. Objective. Use percents and fractions to analyze and compare data sets of different sizes. Let's go ahead and take a look at a word problem. Ralph has a collection of 40 baseball cards. 12 are rookie cards. Jesse has a collection of 50 baseball cards. 15 are rookie cards. Who has the greater percent of rookie baseball cards? There are two different ways that we can go ahead and compare these data sets. One of those is to go ahead and use fractions. In using fractions, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and write a fraction for Ralph's collection rookie cards, which is part of the whole, over 40, which is the total number of cards that Ralph has. And so this is the fraction for Ralph. In the same manner, we can go ahead and write a fraction for Jesse. Jesse has 50 baseball cards altogether, and 15 of them are rookie cards. Now, we cannot compare these two here because the denominators are not the same. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and write equivalent fractions for each of these here, and then one of the common denominators we could end up choosing is 200. That's a times 5 in the denominator, times 5 in the numerator. In doing that, 12 times 5 is 60. So, Ralph's collection is 60 two hundredths when we're using fractions there. Jesse's, again, we're going to have that common denominator, we'll multiply by 4. And so, 15 times 4 is 60. 50 times 4 is 200, and so they end up being the same. In this case, then, we can say that 12 ths is equal to 15 ths, so they actually have the same percentage of rookie baseball cards. Here we have that same problem, and our second way is to use percents. And then so if we figure out the percentage of Ralph's baseball cards that are rookie cards, we start with Ralph's fraction as before, 12 ths, and we take that fraction and we put it into simplest form. And then so we could divide the numerator and denominator by 4 to place this back towards simplest form, where that equals 3 tenths. 3 tenths is equal to 0 0.3, and which is equal to 0 0.30, which is 30%. If we do the same thing for Jesse, we'll start with Jesse's fraction, and Jesse's fraction is 15 out of 50. And again, we can take that back down to simplest form by dividing by 5 in the numerator and denominator to go ahead and get 3 tenths, which is also equal to 0 0.3, which is also equal to 30%. They actually have the same percent of rookie baseball cards. This is the type of problem that you'll see. Compare. Use greater than, less than, or equal. You either have 10 out of 25, and you have 6 out of 8. You're asked to compare them. 10 out of 25, using a fraction approach, is 10 25ths. 6 out of 8, fraction approach, is 6 out of 8. And then we look for that common denominator. One of the easiest things to do is to multiply by that opposite denominator. And you would do so not only in the numerator, but also in the denominator. In a way, it's easy in that you know what to multiply by. And in a way, it can be kind of difficult because what you're doing is that um, you're multiplying larger numbers there. 6 times 25 is 150. And that's over 200 as well. So we know that 80 two hundredths is less than 150 two hundredths, so that 10 out of 25 is less than 6 out of 8. So that's one approach where it is that we are um, using fractions and just comparing them with that common denominator. We've got that common denominator. It's time for you to try. Please compare these using a fraction approach. We've got two problems for you to try, 4 out of 5 compared with 3 out of 7, and then 6 out of 9 compared with 2 out of 3. 
please go ahead and hit pause and solve these problems. First two fractions that you would end up writing, 4 out of 5 and 3 out of 7. You would end up getting something along these lines where you get a common denominator so that you would know that 4 fifths is bigger than 3 sevenths. 4 out of 5 is greater than 3 out of 7. For the other one here, we've got 6 ninths, we've got 2 thirds, and we actually know that those two are equal to each other. We can get that common denominator of 9, so we'll put an equal sign there. The other method is to use percents. Here's a similar type problem. So there's a problem 2 out of 5 and 3 out of 8. Let's go ahead and write percentages for each. 2 out of 5, again, target is to go ahead and get 100 there. So we'll multiply by 20, multiply by 20 to get 40 over 100, which is equal to 40%. For 3 out of 8, I'm going to use a different approach that we've used before in that 3 over 8, which is 3 divided by 8, and we'll use that division approach to get a decimal, and then we can change that de decimal number into a percentage. So we got 3 divided by 8, place a 0 here after a decimal point. That's 3. 3 times 8 is 24. 30 minus 24 is 6. Place a 0 to bring down a 0. 60 divided by 8 is 7. 7 times 8 is 56. 60 minus 56 is 4. Place a 0 to bring down a 0. I ran out of a little room to work, but 40 divided by 8 is 5. Decimal point comes straight up because I'm dividing by a whole number. 3 eighths, and that's mental math as well, for some of you at least, is 0.375, which is equal to 37.5%. So, 40% is bigger than 37.5%, so we can place a greater than sign knowing that 2 out of 5 is greater than 3 out of 8. So that's using percents to compare those two, um, those two values there. And really what we're doing is we're actually not comparing two values, but we're comparing two data sets. The data set 2 out of 5 and the data set 3 out of 8. Please copy down these two problems and hit pause. I'll write it as a fraction first, 12 thirtieths. And then the easier way for me is to go ahead and simplify this first. Divided by 6 it looks like equals 2. Third divided by 6 is 5, 2 fifths. And then 2 fifths, 2 out of 5, and then we 3 fifths. We're really supposed to be writing percentages though. 2 fifths is 0 0.4, which is 40%. And 3 fifths is 60%. Really, you probably want like this times 2 times 2 to get 6 tenths. Now we go 17 out of 50 and 7 out of 20. Your approach is probably something like this, 17 fiftieths. You get 7 twentieths here. Write them as a decimal so you can write them as percentages. We'll do work with 7 out of 20 first. That's 7 divided by 20. Place a 0. That's 3. 3 times 20 is 60. 70 minus 60 is 10. Place another 0 to bring down a 0, and 100 divided by 20 is 5. 5 times 20 is 100, and 100 minus 100 is 0. That's 0.35, which is equal to 35%. Now, if you did your math correctly for 17 ths that's times 2 and times 2. Easy recognizable for me, at least, hopefully for you too, at some point, 17 times 2 is 34, that's 34 over 100, which is equal to 34%. So we're comparing them, um, these 
data sets, and so in comparing these data sets, we know that 34% is less than 35%, so the data set 17 out of 50 is smaller than 7 out of 20. In a way, if somebody offers you um, 17 out of 50, um, let's say chocolate chips versus 7 out of 20 chocolate chips, in a package, then you would want to the 7 out of 20 because the 7 out of 20 actually represents a larger data set. Now, in the other example above there, that was less than. So they're actually both less than. So just to review, when it says something like 3 out of 4, it could be like 3 out of 4 um, students remember to do their homework. Hopefully you're one of them. Well, seeing as you got to this part, that's probably true. 3 out of 4. And then so we can express 3 out of 4 as a fraction. You can also express it as a decimal number. And you can go ahead and make that conversion 75 over 100, 0 0.75. And really what I told you, though, is that we can express that as a percentage. And then when we compare these data sets, like 3 out of 4 with like 5 out of 7 or 9 out of 20, what we're doing is we can use those fractions to get a common denominator to compare them, or we can go ahead and convert them both to decim decimals and eventually percentages so that we can just compare them in that manner in that fashion. So we can compare data sets of different sizes.